the Spirit here. We welcome you into this service. We welcome you to have your way, Jesus. Move among us. We're expecting great things today. Yes, Lord. We gather to give you glory and we give you the praise and we give you the honor, God, because we recognize that you're good and your mercy endures forever. We give you glory. Come on, clap your hands and give you glory. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you. 
And I don't know. It's something that was making hot at first. But it's something I'm going to start with. Yeah. 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 So we want to end. We're in your hand. We know that you are in control. We know you are in the world. You tell us. And don't forget to stop out of you. With my work. My God, the preacher don't come. She just took us. Everybody shouting good old Every round.
together in all things, and they would still their possessions to the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and heart, praising God and having the good of all the people. And day by day, they had their number so the word of God. Oh, hell, 
reigns forever. Oh, he reigns, he reigns, he reigns forever. Oh, he reigns, he reigns, he reigns forever. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns forever. His name is Jesus, ruler of everything. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus, ruler of everything. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Now there's healing in his name. There's deliverance in his name. His name is Jesus, ruler of everything. There's salvation in his name. His name is Jesus, ruler of everything. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus, ruler of everything. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Ruler of everything. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. Ruler of everything. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The ruler. As I shared last Sunday, we are moving toward the end of this conference year. And about 10 days, the pastor will be heading to annual conference. And it is the Lord's will that will be done. Amen. Amen. And so our announcement today, I just want to put up a few announcements to share with you today. There's some upcoming meetings uh, on the first Sunday. I want you to plan for those in advance. Uh, so that you your lunch reservations, whatever needs to be done. We have had virtual meetings with most of our lay organization and our FMS, and they have asked and requested to have an in-person meeting. So immediately following service on first Sunday, we will meet down in the fellowship hall with those two organizations. If you don't know what they are, then I encourage you to come and find out. As we move through this year, uh, it is time for us to right the ship and begin to do that which God has called us to do that has been on hold during this pandemic. Uh, in just a few more days, I think something like that. The president uh, has that the pandemic will be officially over. Mm. So uh, it's time to let go and let God. And please take note of those two meetings. And then this is something that we have been talking about for a long time. Our yard said, we're going to have a So I want you to put the date on your calendar now. The first Saturday in June. I know some of you got some boxes in your house. You got some stuff that uh, you boxed up and you hadn't gotten around to unboxing from the booth or, or, or cleaning out or whatever. Uh, please come out. Uh, you'll get more detailed information about this. Uh, give you a table, uh, sell it, and make it a little money. Uh, there will be a flat for the table. Uh, we set up the outdoor open up early in the week uh, so that people will know and uh, you know, pastor has so much bit of stuff that I need to bring to get rid of and, and then if you just don't like I just don't have time for that I don't want to go through the headache of figuring out what I should price if you want to donate it to the church we'll have a church table uh, and those items will be available for sale and all the proceeds for that will go your table, the only proceeds that will go to the for the table, the sales doors. Amen. So please make note of that. Even as you're maybe doing some spring cleaning, 
sale in that season, set some items to the side and say this will be for the yard sale on June 3rd. Amen. Our summer camp. Uh, it's summer, summer, summertime. And uh, the summer camp is kicking off uh, the end of May, the 30th. That's the following Monday. Summer camp will be in full effect. And they will be running through the press for 19 weeks. Uh, one that you know that they can put in a safe and learning environment and fun environment. Here at Mount Zion, available to serve you through our Serve First Learning Academy, which is state approved by the Bright Start DECAL, uh, which is a Department of Early Learning um, State of. So you're to be in a safe environment. So we thank you for your support. That meant um, those are for today. Make note of them uh, as you do this week and as you prepare to come back together in person on the first Sunday. You know, um, when we're in the sanctuary, we always take time in the service to whisper a prayer to the Lord. And so I don't want to be remiss because I, I I've been on the other side of some Zoom all virtual meetings, all of that, and I, I know how I've done. I hadn't always paid attention. I put my picture up, and they can see, and I go do what I'm gonna do. And so I know sometimes it's hard to shut out the distractions. Maybe what you do, as I you in this time to just close the door, even if you got to lock it sometimes. The lock is for Keep out the distraction. And allow yourself to just focus on God. You're knocking out a while. You're tired of knocking after a while. They'll take the hand. Close the door. Just allow yourself in this Music plays softly. Begin to talk to the Lord. Say that I may not be in the that you call the church, but I am such a Right now. 
just say thank you, Lord. Thank you for being here in our prayers. Thank you for receiving us in the in, in your sanctuary, Lord and God. Thank you for allowing us, even in our homes and in our cars and our places of the road, God, you heard our cry this morning, God. Heard our desires, you heard our concerns, you heard the challenges, you heard the hills we're trying to climb, and the valleys we've been in. And God, you've even heard about the mountain top that you took us to, and uh, the, the, the celebrations that you brought us to, and, and the things that you fixed for us, God. We gave you thanks, God. We came before your court with this morning, God. And so now, God, we ask you to just hear our cry, God. Don't leave us in our hour of need, God. I, I, it, it may be minor, but it's major right now, God. So, God, give us the peace that will pass all understanding. Give us the, the solution when, we, when we're searching aimlessly. Can't seem to find our way, God. Remind us that you're not the author of confusion, that all that takes place, God, that you're doing it in an orderly fashion. That even when it seems like chaos to you, God, it's already being worked out according to your will. God, enable us to not get busy and well doing. God, enable us to continue to run and not get weary to walk and not faint. We thank you, God, for your ever-present help. We thank you, God, for answering us when we call on you. We thank you, God, for just being present, God. We thank you, God, that even when we don't do right, even when we do wrong, even when we neglect our time with you, even when we're disobedient, even when we do not do your will, God. You are a forgiving God. You're a loving God. You're a God of a second chance. And so now God we said, thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> to your name. <laughs> thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you because you've been so good. Thank you, Lord. But you have not treated us the way we treated you. Thank you, God, for being our field in the middle of the week. <laughs> Thank you for being our water in dry places. Thank you, God, for all that you have done. And now, God, receive these petitions into your storehouse. Do your will with them. Pray in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. It's preaching time. But before we prepare to go to the word, this praise team, ever faithful, is going to come and lift us up before the Lord. Will you pray with them as they come that the word of God shall come forth as we break the bread of life. my worship you deserve my praise adoration and glory belong to you always when I think of the goodness of Jesus 
and all he's done for me oh my soul it cries hallelujah I thank God for saving me. You deserve my worship. You deserve my worship. You deserve my praise. You deserve my praise. Adoration and glory. Adoration and glory. They belong to you always. They belong to you always. You deserve my worship. You deserve my worship. You deserve, you deserve my praise. Adoration and glory. Adoration and glory. They all belong to you. Belong to you always. For your goodness and your mercy, your loving kindness, for this you kiss, for your goodness, for, for your, your goodness and your mercy. Your loving kindness, your loving kindness, for your goodness, for your goodness, and your mercy, and your mercy, your loving kindness, for this, for your goodness, and your mercy. Your loving kindness, your loving kindness, your loving kindness, For your goodness, for your goodness, and your mercy, and your mercy, your loving kindness, for the years, for your goodness, for your goodness, and your mercy, and your mercy, your loving kindness, your loving kindness, Thank you. 
So for this appointed time, I want to draw your attention today. Combination of scriptures that we read today and scriptures that we read last. Going to act in chapter. And reading from the New Revised Standard Version, it's And Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, not just some of y'all, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. You will receive the gift of the For the promise is for you. And children, not just about you. And for all who are your food and your bed, everyone whom the Lord our God called. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation so that those who received his word were baptized. And there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. And all came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing these to all that came at day by day, attending the temple 
together and break their bread in their home. They receive their food with gladness. Praising God and having faith. And the Lord added to their number day by day. Day by day. Those who were saved. Let us pray. We come to this place. Thank you for moving in such an awesome way in this service. I ask you to break every yoke that binds, every every burden that bears down to me, God. I ask you to do it right now, God. So that in this preaching moment, burdens will be broken, hearts will be um, cheerful, and, 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 and we will be fixed on your preaching. Now I pray as always, God, my power and my and the people of God said, Amen. And, and for just a moment for today, I want to preach to you. Here's your worship. Here's your worship. Hallelujah. It's, it's time to hear from the Lord. And I do believe there is a word from the Lord today. On this fifth Sunday morning, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, right now, we thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity. We thank you for the preaching moment, God. We thank you that you thought it not robbery, God, to allow us to see a brand new day, God, that we've never seen before. And so now as we humble ourselves before you, even in our homes and in our automobiles, wherever it is that we may be on this fifth Sunday morning, God, we still want to be in your presence, God. So we ask you right now to enter into the homes, enter into the automobiles, enter into workplaces, enter into different places and spaces where our people may be gathering today, God. Enable them to shut out the distractions and, and, uh, and create an altar in your presence, Lord. For we need you, God. We need you to come right now, God, and bless us in a mighty way. We need you to move, God, in a mighty way. We thank you, God, for what you're doing and what we know that you will do. We are honoring you, God, with our faithfulness. We're honoring you right now. And we ask, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight, for you are indeed my rock and my redeemer. And the people of God said, amen. 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 So for the word today, I want to draw your attention to a scripture we read from this scripture earlier. But I want to draw your attention specifically to Acts, the second chapter. And I want to begin at verse 14. And then I want to go down to verse 36, 41 for this preaching moment. But Peter standing with the 11, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my word. And then at verse 36, it says, let all the house of Israel Therefore, know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. 
And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them saying, save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized and there were added that day almost 3,000 souls. The word of God to encourage the people of God. And for this preach moment today, I want to pin a title to this text that says the question, is your worship effective? Is your worship effective? While technology has given us options as a result of our pandemic experience, we must not lose sight of true worship. I believe we're right now in a, in a time where we are experiencing a risk of faith. I believe and declare that in this season that that is what, uh, that with all the manifestation of all we have experienced as part of our faith walk, this is what it is leading us to, because I fear that instead of drawing nearer to God, it appears we have put more distance between not just each other, but between us and God through a questionable loss of focus on our faith. And I know while God has not changed, I do acknowledge that our experience in this new season has changed. And in many ways, this shift has sought to change our focus. And we have, during the time that we have shifted to a new way of worship. But we must be real with ourselves. And if we are, we will admit that there is much we must address in the way we view the role and our responsibility in worship, how we view even the institution we call church. The place we seem to have forgot is not limited to just the physical space, but church resides in your sacred space, that space that resides in each one of us. But somehow instead we've allowed that space to become a convenient scapegoat for our lack of commitment. We focus too much on the church building and, and, and so as a result, we hear comments that are being made. What is the church doing about this? And what is the church doing about that? And then somebody else will turn around and say, child, the church needs to do this. And the church ought to do that. As if some invisible person would show up and be willing to do what we're not willing to do. Be willing to sacrifice what we're not willing to sacrifice our time, our talents, and our treasures for worship. God has shook us up over these last three years and now desires for us to return as true and authentic people of kingdom worship. Not ritual worship, not denominational worship, not worship of titles, not worship of buildings, but kingdom worship. And if you're confused about that term, then you may have already answered the question posed by our sermon, my, my sermon today. Is your worship effective? In this text we looked at today, Peter and his disciples were, Peter and the disciples were hiding in their house, as many of us are still doing right now. Afraid to acknowledge God and bear witness to being a follower of Jesus or as we're known today, Christians, followers of Christ. Before they had experienced this faith challenge, they had been faithful to their God. They had showed up in the tabernacle, in the synagogue, in the church, and they had prayed and fasted and worshiped and prayed and praised and prayed without ceasing, but now things are different. And they conveniently say, I'm worshiping online. I, I, I'm worshiping at home. Uh, they, they are confused about what a true commitment to being a follower of Christ looks like in this season. They've developed a different attitude, uh, attitude in which they are wavering on what should be required of them. 
But just like Peter, Peter admonished them for their shallow faith, for their fearfulness of public opinion. And by failing to be faithful, they were all part, he says, of crucifying Jesus. And, and I believe if we put it in today's terms, some of us are still crucifying Jesus by our unauthentic worship, by our failure to be true and effective in our worship. By, we are crucifying Jesus because we do not want to acknowledge him as Lord over our life. We do not want to acknowledge him by the sacrifice of our time, by the sacrifice of our talents, by the sacrifice of our treasures. And we are crucifying Jesus every day. And so these individuals gathered to question their faith. As many of us gather on the sidewalk or on social media, or on the telephone and complain about how difficult it has been to continue to follow Jesus. They were looking at each other and, and, and what each other was or was not doing. They were busy criticizing each other. But then somehow Peter, and we know Peter had his issues, and I acknowledge we all got our issues. But somehow or another, Peter woke up and Peter found his faith and his voice. And with that, and because of that, his worship became effective because he understood that you cannot seek God without sincerity. When we're not authentic or real in our worship, real in our prayers, real in our praise, we will become ineffective in our worship. So you have to understand, it doesn't matter what Pastor E thinks. God examines our heart. God examines your purpose. God examines your motives. God examines every hand clap you make. Every amen, every hallelujah, every prayer, every praise, every song. He is searching our hearts. And, and, and he's searching to see, is our worship for real? Right. He's searching to see if our focus is on him. Or if we're just displaying external holiness. Oh yeah, you know, we can dress it up. But God wants internal holiness. It looks good on the outside, but inside your heart, inside the soul, inside your mind, your true worship is exposed. We come dressed up, but not cleaned up. We come ready to go through the order of service, but not ready for God to order our lives, not ready for God to order our minds, not ready for God to order our souls. We want God, but we don't want no strings attached. We want to serve him when we want to and when we feel like it and when we got time. We want no accountability. We want no responsibility. We don't want God to want nothing from us, but we want everything from him. God is not satisfied with the outward appearance. It may look good to others. Your prayers may sound good. Your songs may be the most popular songs of the time. The sermon may be on point. I may hoop a little bit and holler a little bit and get a shout in every now and then. But the heart of the matter has to be changed. So Peter told them, you must first repent. You have to change your heart. You have to change your focus. And that can be a heart matter. Repentance is hard, H-A-R-D. Because it's required to change your H-E-A-R-T, your heart. And it requires a heart change, a heart matter, for you to be effective. Isaiah reminds us back in the 29th chapter in the Old Testament, he says, because these people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips while their hearts are far from me. And their worship of me is a human commandment learned by rote, which means you're just going through the motions. You're just doing it because that's what you always do. You're just doing it because somebody else is doing it. But I stopped by to let you know, in case you didn't, God is omniscient. He doesn't 
he doesn't know just what you tell him. He knows everything about you before you even utter a word to him. And then God is omnipresent. He, he doesn't tune you in when you call on him. He sees you all the time. There is nowhere you can go that he does not see you. God is omnipotent. He has the power to keep you from falling even when you're disobedient. Because he is all powerful and able to do all things. So what is this worship? that I'm talking about. What is this worship that I'm asking you? Is your worship effective? Worship, worship is your confession of God's sovereignty in your life. Worship is what Abraham demonstrated when he was willing to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. The Lord will solicit not only your adulation and reverence and respect, but the Lord wants your sacrifice because effective worship is always sacrificial. If it don't cost you nothing, it ain't effective. If you didn't give up anything, it ain't effective. If it didn't stretch you, it's not effective. If it didn't make you feel uncomfortable, it's not effective. If it did not require anything of you, it's not effective. Our sacrificial worship is expressed when we sing God's praises, seek God's face, study God's word, enter God's presence, exalt God's name, and celebrate God's sovereignty. The word says, given to the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. See, understand, when our worship is effective, when we worship the Father is glorified. When we worship the Son is magnified. When we worship the Holy Spirit is gratified. When we worship the Bible is ratified. When we worship the church is edified. When we worship the soul is satisfied. And when we worship Satan is horrified. Are you just going through the motions today? Ask yourself, are you just doing what you've always done? That's what matters to God, that we repent, which enables us to seek him with sincerity so that our worship is effective. And then once we repent, it reminds us that we are transformed. Worship only works when we're authentic. And authenticity only comes when you have been transformed by the Holy Spirit. Authenticity cannot be faked. It has to be real. God does not desire our pretense. God doesn't it, it desire us doing something just because we've been prompted by the pastor. God does not... Uh, desire that we just get up and clap our hands because somebody told us to clap our hands. God is not desirous of us just uh, shouting hallelujah and amen because we think that's what we're supposed to do. Worship is not a call and response. Oh, I, I, I touch your neighbor, tell your neighbor. It's not a pump and prime you up time. God wants authentic praise and authentic worship in which our praise is not about us. It's not about the songs we sing. It's not about us getting upset if our name is not called. It's not about whether we are on the program or left off the program. It's not about whether somebody asked us to be on the committee or did not, but it's all about God. Our motivation is not what others will think, but what will God think? Mm. So as you begin to examine, is your worship effective? Begin to do some retrospect on where you are in your worship. Because see, worship does not come from what God has done. If you're waiting on God to do it before you worship him, then your worship is not effective. You have to ask yourself, 
am I worshiping God because he is God all by himself? If he never does anything for me, he's already done enough. Because he woke me up this morning, <laughs> started me on my way. So I have to look at my worship and say, is my worship pleasing in his sight? Is what I'm saying pleasing in his sight? Uh, is what I'm praying pleasing in his sight? Is what I'm singing pleasing in his sight? Is what I'm preaching pleasing to God? Yeah. That's when God can be found. That's how we seek him. That's when the Holy Spirit will fall fresh on you. When your praise is authentic, then it's not just a ritual of righteousness. Ritualistic worship. Righteousness. When we sit in judgment. More concern about whether somebody splitting the verb or pronouncing the word than thanking God that I have the ability to speak. Even though it may not always be right, my praise has to be for real. My worship has to be authentic. So many times we need to have a refocus, a reshift so that I, we can come with authentic worship. An effective worship that acknowledges the marvelous things that God is able to do for us. Not just when he fixed it, but to worship him when he fixed it and you didn't even know it was broken. The God that bought us through this and bought us through that. The God who has the power to answer our prayers. The power to change our circumstances. The power to open our hearts. When we get real with God, our worship will become effective because it says, then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. And your worship will be effective because see, understand, sometimes we want to separate our Monday through Saturday from our Sunday morning, but separate is not equal nor is it effective. Uh, we've come through some difficult days and we've had some uncertain times, but we must still seek God because we're still going through some difficult days yeah. and some uncertain times. We're wondering if we're in a recession. We're wondering if there is inflation. We're wondering who's gonna be the next president. Yeah. We're wondering what the Supreme Court is going to do. We're wondering about so many times, many things that are affecting us, people in our family that are going through difficult times. But we fought some battles in the streets. We fought battles in the courts. We fought battles in the ballot box. And the battle is not over. We're under a spiritual attack right now because I believe our worship has become ineffective uh, and many of us are questioning why saying we serve a merciful God but I stopped by to let you know and remind you that we also serve a jealous God and we turn our hearts from God we've allowed things and other agendas to replace God in our lives. Uh, we've turned our hearts from God. We've told God that we can lead a separate but equal life. And I talked about it, stopped by to let you know that long time ago, some of you may not remember, but the law of the land when it came to us was separate but equal. We called it segregation. I stopped by to let you know you can't segregate your life when it comes to God. Separate is not equal. It didn't work back then, and it doesn't work for God as our creator. We can't separate our daily lives from our Sunday morning lives. We cannot continue to kneel and pray and get up and remain unchanged. I ask you today, is your worship effective? Why did you even show up this morning? Yes, I know it's virtual, but some of us didn't even bother to show up virtual in the comfort of your own home. I don't know what you could have on, but you just had to flip on the YouTube, turn on the TV, flip on the computer, 
bring it up on your smartphone and you wouldn't even do that. Are you even worshiping? Are you there? Oh, what reverence are you bringing? Because virtual worship is still worship. What reverence do you approach the worship experience wherever you may be? Are you even worshiping God? Or has this time become so convenient for so many of us? We made the choice to just tune out. Some of us will sign on and tune out. Sign on and sleep in. Sign on and watch it later when I have time and time never comes because understand time still waits for nobody. It don't wait for man. It don't wait for woman. But I stop by to let you know that God is watching your worship. Ew, was your worship ever about God when you showed up? before the pandemic and came on Sunday morning, you might have stood on a corner and ushered. You might have been up here in the choir. Now we can't get nobody to usher. We can't even get you to show up to sing, more or less show up to worship. So I ask you, was your worship ever effective? Was your worship ever for real? Because understand, it ain't about the outward appearance. It's about what's going on in your heart. I may not can see your heart, but I stop by to let you know that we serve a God that sits high and looks low. And God can see you. And he's asking, he said, are you serving me. Uh, see, I'm just a messenger, but even I will have to answer. Is my focus fixed on Jesus? Oh, is uh, or am I more interested in pleasing the people? Because see, sometimes as a leader, as a shepherd, I have to get out the shepherd hook and bring some sheep back into the fold. And it's never a pleasant experience. Uh, but I stopped by to let you know that I serve a mighty God. <laughs> and I'm seeking to please him every day. <laughs> and so I understand what it means to have my focus fixed on the Lord. <laughs> but I want to stop by this morning and ask you, <laughs> is your worship effective? Uh, or is it just an outward appearance <laughs> with no inward substance? <laughs> I stopped by to let you know you need to look at your inward relationship with God. Because sometimes we have to be willing, as the scripture says, to repent. We have to be willing to humble ourselves and say, Lord, here am I. Use me. Sometimes we got to be available for God not just on our schedule, but we have to make time for the Lord. Oh, then when we repent, you have to have a contrite heart. That means you think less about yourself and you think more about what God would have me to do. And then you have to repent and acknowledge in your heart, Lord, I haven't done all that I should have done. Lord, I've placed some things before you. Lord, I've made some excuses. Lord, I got upset and because I couldn't get my way. Lord, I forgot it wasn't about me, but it was about you. But I'm repenting because I want the promise to be seen by others in me. I want the promise of the Holy Spirit. I want to be able to testify to others in season and even out of season. I want to be able to give witness when it's popular and when it may be downright dangerous. I want to be able to say, I love the Lord. I want to worship you in spirit and truth. God, I want you to hear my cry. I want to seek you while you can still be found. I want to be able to dwell in your tabernacle. I want to know that in the time of trouble, you will hide me in your tabernacle. I want to know when I call, you will answer. I want to know when I need help, I can look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. I want to know that you are the repairer of the breach. I want to know that you are restorer of the streets we live in. I want to be effective. 
I want someone to be added to the numbers by my testimony. I want the power of the Holy Spirit to fall fresh on me. I want the power of the Holy Spirit to fall on my household. I want the promise to come to my children. I want the promise to come to my children's children. So I want to live a life that's transformed. I want to live a life that's repentant. I want to live a life of humility. I want my worship to be effective. Anybody in the house today, anybody in the virtual space today that want their worship to be effective, Peter told them, he said, God gave a promise and he said, on your promise, it will fall fresh on you. And he said in his word, you know, let me just go back and tell you in case you forgot and think pastor's making it up. He said, repent and be baptized, uh, that means you got to repent and clean up the inside of your soul. And he said, for the promise is for you, uh, and it's for your children, uh, and all who far off, uh, everyone I believe in the place, uh, can tell you that you got somebody in your family, uh, you got somebody in your circle uh, who is far off from God. Uh, but God said, if your worship is effective, uh, the promise can come to them. I'm stopped by today to let you know I got some crooked folks in my generation. I got some crooked folks in my family. I got some crooked friends. I got some crooked folks that I work with. And I know that if my worship is effective, I can be a testimony to them. They will see God in me. And because of my testimony, because of the Lord, the life I live, and because my worship is effective, they will be redeemed. The Holy Spirit will come in their lives just like it did back then. Peter said because they testified and their testimony was effective and because they worshiped and their worship was effective, he said about 3,000 souls were added that day. So what does that say to us today? Our worship is not effective. We sit back and wonder why the church is not growing. We wonder why people are not coming, why the numbers are not increasing. I challenge you today to ask the question, is your worship effective? Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God some glory this morning. Oh, we ought to call on the name of the Lord and say, I need to be effective. The world needs my worship to be effective. My children need my worship to be effective. My community needs my worship to be effective. My family needs my worship to be effective. I got some grandchildren that need my worship to be effective. I got some friends that I need my worship worship to be effective so that they will draw near to the Lord and they will be added to the number. Is your worship effective? Ask yourself. I believe with all my heart that many of the things we are enduring today, I tell us all the time we I think we have really made the devil the scapegoat. Easy to blame it on the devil. You know, there was a comedian way back in the day. You used to always say, the devil made me do it. That was the easy out. And some of us are still taking that easy out. I don't know what got into that child. It must have been the devil. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, the devil is busy. As Christians, we need to get busy. The devil is only busy because we have become unbusy. We not testifying to nobody. Our prayers are ineffective. We're weak. We are afraid to say what thus saith the Lord, even in our own household, even in the home that you write the check for. That got your name on the on the note, on the lease. You're afraid to even change the channel on the radio when you're riding in the car with your children. 
and you know you don't want to listen to that music. Ineffective. Not giving any testimony. Not giving any correction. Not reminding them what thus saith the Lord. Is your worship effective? As Christians, we got to become effective. We, the world is in the state it is in now, I believe, because of our ineffectiveness. We don't have no impact. Everybody show up except us. We don't even go to the council meetings, the school board meetings. We don't do none of that. We don't volunteer in the schools. Because we, we don't volunteer at our church. We don't want to start no ministry. And then we don't want to show up for the ministries that are going on. Ineffective. That we can have opportunities to grow in our faith. Won't show up for Bible study. Because we're ineffective. We're weak. We lack spiritual maturity. We lack a spirit, a strong spiritual muscle. It's just like your body. If you don't exercise it, you lose strength. We got to begin to use the word of God. We've got to become effective in our worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for the blessing. Thank you, God, for moving in somebody's heart today to help them to become effective. They may be, uh, they're in the virtual space today, God. And so we can't invite them to the altar in the physical space, but we invite them right now, wherever they are. Just put your hand on, on, your, on your iPad, put your hand on your computer, put your hand on your smartphone. If you need the Lord to strengthen you, to strengthen your worship, I'm not talking about your coming to church. That's not what worship is. Your worship. If you need God to strengthen you so that you understand what true worship and effective worship is, I want to pray for you right now. And if you're looking for a church home, a place to grow your faith, grow your strength, we invite you to connect with us. The QR code will be showing up on the screen. You're welcome to scan it. Reach out to us and we will reach back out to you. But we need to become effective in our worship. It is not just, it's not optional anymore. It's like mandatory. If we want the world to change, if we're tired of hearing the news reports and the violence and our young people going to prison and record numbers, killing each other, we got to become more effective in our worship as Christians. Lord, right now, I ask you to touch the person who is touching their computer, touching their iPad, touching their smartphone, touching the remote if they're watching us on TV. God, strengthen them, God, that they have now put their hand to the plow and they will not turn back, God. Give them the strength and the fortitude to be bold in their faith, God, to be bold in their worship so that someone will see their testimony about you, God, and it will have an effect on their lives. It will draw them to you. It will turn them to you, and their souls will be added to the number daily. God, we need you right now in a mighty way, God. Move right now. Because we can't do it without you. We're weak. We're ineffective. We're fearful. We're not sure. We're complacent. We're comfortable. But we're not effective. But God, we know that you're able to empower us. And so now, God, we call on you. Because we can't do it any other way. We can't move without you. We cannot do this without you. So will you come and walk with these individuals who are acknowledging you in their life? We thank you. We magnify you and we glorify you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. I pray everyone is having a blessed day in the, in the name of the Lord on this fifth Sunday. We're preparing now to leave this place, but never from your presence. And we pray that the spirit of Lord would dwell with you. Come back and join us on first Sunday. We will be back in this space physically as we welcome in a new month and a new opportunity to give God the praise. But this week, check your worship and make sure your worship is effective. We surrender all to you. We surrender it all to you. We surrender it all to you. As we prepare to be your presence. with our gifts we have received his word and now we honor this word with his gifts of giving options are appearing on the screen we ask that you make use of them in your spaces and abodes in your home and that you will give back as God has so generously given to you God has blessed us not to be selfish because when your hand is Nothing can come in. You may be holding on, but that's all you can hold on to. You gotta let go. In this season, is your worship affected? Are you seeing the results? Are you, is it lined up with God? Are you following the plan that God laid out? Give, and it shall be given. So we encourage you in this giving moment that you will give according to what God has blessed you. Our cash app, our guillotine, our bill, please make note of the new sales, which is our email address, Mount Zion AME College Park at Comcast. Please utilize that for our sale. And of course, you're always free to drop it in the mail to our PO box or drop it in our our block box that is at the corner of our entrance. And we thank you so much for how you are blessing God's people by being obedient to what God has called you to do. We're preparing to leave this place, but never from the presence of God. We thank you for giving. We thank you so much for worshiping with us today. And I just want to remind you as we, we love to be here at Mount Zion that God has a blessing for us. But there is it's conditional. You have to get in the will of God. You have to make sure your worship is effective. You have to make sure that what you are doing is pleasing in the sight of God. Because the scripture reminds us that we use today that, that, that when they did these things, every day stuff was happening. They were getting increased. The numbers were increasing. People were being saved. Family members who have saved were coming back. Drug addicts were in recovery. Sickness was being healed. That 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 that, that uh, disobedient child was being brought back to the fold. Things were happening because it says they were worshiping God on one accord. They were breaking bread together. They were together. That's something that's missing. So ask yourself: Are you doing those things? Because if not, your worship will not be effective. We're preparing to leave this place but never from the presence of God. Because see, when you do that, you will be blessed. And you're going out. You'll be blessed in your coming in. You'll be blessed in your lying down, rising out. You will be blessed. Come on, please, please. Let's take it.
Everybody say bless, 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 bless. Say bless, 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 bless. bless, 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 we bless when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We'll sing later, later. In the midnight hour. Ah, God's gonna turn it it's around. It's gonna work. It's gonna work in your favor. And we sing later. Late in the midnight hour. God. God's gonna turn it around. Hand 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 around. Think God's gonna turn it. God's gonna turn it around. God's gonna turn it around. God's gonna turn it around. God's gonna turn it. God's gonna turn it around. God's gonna turn it around. God's gonna turn it around. In around, 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 in